Hi, I'm JD, and I just want to say, Squee! I'm sorry, but Avengers! I've talked in the past that the X-Men is what got me into comics, but as I got older, the Avengers became one of my favorite books. All these big name Marvel characters gathered together. It's just so epic. Lo, there came a day, a day unlike any other, when Earth's mightiest heroes were gathered together to fight a common threat. On that day, the Avengers were born. To fight foes no single hero could withstand. Let the call go out. Avengers, assemble! <laughs> And next month, after four years, five films, and two roadies worth of build-up, we finally get the big screen adaptation of Marvel's biggest team, from the mind of fan favorite writer and director, Joss Whedon. And I've used my newfound pull at Geek Vision to hook me up. Yeah, check it out. In fact, why am I sitting here talking to you about it? Let's watch this thing. <laughs> Clearly, I need to learn to be more specific. Fine. Let's talk Avengers. <sighs> United they stand. Yes, in 1999, Fox Kids came out with this forgotten gem based on Marvel's Avengers comics. I was 19 at the time, and while previously I loved anything that was based on a comic book, by this age I was starting to develop things like taste. Let's get this over with, shall we? The two-part opener, entitled Avengers Assemble, begins at the hidden base of Ultron. Ultron, you say? Well, he is one of my favorite villains. Maybe this won't be so bad. No more than it deserves me. Never mind. Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna rant so early in this episode, but Ultron really is one of my favorite bad guys, and here he looks ridiculous. While I don't love comic book Ultron for his design, it's fairly simple, but it works. Here he looks so bulky that it seems impractical for him to move, very least try to wipe out human life. Not that this pathetic world of humans deserves you, my vision. No more than it deserves me. Ultron. He starts monologuing. He starts, he starts monologuing. So Ultron completes his ultimate creation, Vision. A living machine, virtually immortal. My greatest creation, Vision. You shall help me purge the world of wretched humanity. I just hope you don't somehow turn on me and join the Avengers. That would be a shocking twist. As long as it's not shown in the opening credits, of course. Avengers! Uh... Ant-Man, the leader of the Avengers. He shall be the first to perish. Ant-Man? Leader of the Avengers? Now, before someone accuses me of hypocrisy, yes, I put Hank Pym as one of my top choices on my top 10 superhero underdogs list. I do genuinely enjoy him as a character. Heck, I enjoyed him when he went kind of nuts, named himself after his dead wife, and ran the Mighty Avengers. But context is everything. The comic's built on decades of Hank's triumphs and failures. That's what makes him interesting. But here, in a new cartoon with no established history, means that the showrunners were legitimately asking us to accept a guy called Ant-Man. Not Captain America, not Iron Man, not Thor, but Ant-Man as the leader of Earth's mightiest heroes. So we cut to Avengers Modern Art Museum, or uh, I mean mansion. Ant-Man is watching the exposition news report when his wife Wasp comes in and reaffirms his manhood or something. I don't know. I'm bored. Next scene. We then see Wonder Man and the Scarlet Witch training. When I change the probabilities affecting something, the, the world goes a little bit crazy. <laughs> 
Hey, if you suddenly get a migraine too? I'm never sure what will happen. Ah, ah. Oh, Simon, you're so nice. <laughs> you look after me like no one else. Oh, screw this. I am editing out her voice and putting in something less painful. Which at this point is just about anything. We then cut to Tigra and... Oh, Clint. What have they done to you? Don't, don't, don't. Look away. Look away. Most of the redesigns here range from passable at best to clunky and over-designed at worst, but Hawkeye's is awful. I mean, Hawkeye's costume has always been a bit on the iffy side. It is rather purple. And maybe I'm responding to this a bit more because Hawkeye's one of my favorite superheroes ever. But the asymmetrical design, the clunky looking armor, is just an eyesore. We also have Tigra, who is notably voiced by Lenore Zahn, who voiced Rogue in X-Men, the animated series. I wanted a real workout. That's mildly distracting, but even more distracting is that she can't even take two steps without growling at the camera. I mean, I know she's a tiger, but we don't need to be further reminded that she's part jungle cat when she has stripes, a tail, and is named freaking Tigra. The Avengers are told to assemble as Hank gets a report that the president is being attacked. Looks like we're going to meet the president sooner than we thought. Avengers, assemble! Just play the clip. Avengers, assemble! We're all right here. Also, I hope you like this sequence because you'll be seeing it or some variant on it at least once an episode for every episode. Also, Hawkeye apparently stripped out of his armor just so he could put it back on. The Vision is leading Ultron's mechanical troops against the President's copter when they fly by the apartment of one Sam Wilson. Oh, no. Those the sax music starts to play when the black guy is on screen. Just saying is all. The Avengers appear and fight off the robots, and Sam, in his guise as the Falcon, flies in and saves Tigra. Vision is actually after Ant-Man, and Hawkeye kind of sort of defies orders in order to attempt to save Hank and Janet. Hawkeye gets an assist from Falcon in order to save the president. What's this? Suddenly, now that the cops are showing up, the Vision declares that it is impossible to complete his mission and retreats. Not sure why, when at best the superheroes were just distracting him, but whatever. Jai Man then demonstrates his excellent leadership skills by yelling at Hawkeye for not guarding the president more, despite him demonstrably saving his life at least once. And apparently the president was injured, even though the last time we saw him, he was looking fine to me. The Avengers government liaison, Sikorsky, yells at them, calls them an inept, and... The president doesn't see it that way. Out of his one good eye. One good eye? Since when? I mean, I don't expect you to show me the bloody empty socket, but you can at least imply something happened on the screen instead of telling us about it. The president demands Falcon be made an Avenger and Hawkeye be kicked off the team. You know, for saving his life. For the good of the team, Hawkeye will have to lay low for a time. What? That's not fair! <laughs> Hawkeye storms off and one man chases after him, and they declare their love for each other. Well, they imply it's just friendship, but listen to Hawkeye's voice. This is true love here, kids. Been through too much. You're the only real friend I've ever had. So you know why I... I gotta go. One of Ultron's robots was being studied by Hank when it was about to self-destruct. Hank stays to try to defuse it while the other Avengers leave to deal with more of Ultron's troops attacking the city. The robots quickly stop fighting for... some reason. I know they're just a distraction to get to Hank, but it seems stupid to have them deactivate so that the team can make it back to save Hank in time. Wonder Man jumps to save Ant-Man from the Vision, but is hurt badly. And then the robot's self-destruct goes off, and... nothing happens? Yeah, that's the cliffhanger they end on in Part 1. They even show it in the intro for Part 2, but nothing ever comes of it. Wasp and Tiger subdue Vision, and Hank proves that he's not as good as a scientist as he makes himself out to be, as he has no idea how Wonder Man's physiology works. This is why it's always important to have your annual physical. That way you can catch and treat robot-related attacks before they become a problem. Janet, out of nowhere, suggests putting Wonder Man's mind into Vision's body. Scarlet Witch objects... I think, but Hank says there's no other way. 
So on a desperate suggestion from the wife of the guy who is a scientist, they try to put Wonder Man's consciousness into the vision. While waiting to see if it works, the Falcon shows up and Tiger gives the tour. She explains that Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America founded the Avengers alongside Wasp and Ant-Man. She doesn't say why they're no longer on the team. I suspect tax evasion. Whatever it was, smart move not to be on this show. Falcon is interested in joining the team, and Hawkeye proves himself to be a giant douche and declares no one can take the place of his BFF, Simon. Better guys than you have tried to become an Avenger and failed! However, they're interrupted by Vision waking up, saying Wanda's name, and promptly blasting the hell out of everyone. Proving yet once again that science can solve any problem, provided that problem isn't you being shot by lasers. The Avengers attack the out-of-control Vision. Hey! Nobody blast my bird! Uh... Is that slang for something? Also, how do people like Scarlet Witch and Falcon's pet Hawk survive getting laser blasted, but the super strong and super tough Wonder Man is put at death's door? The Avengers stagger Vision, and he starts to remember Hawkeye before passing out. We then find out Vision really isn't Wonder Man, just that Vision's thought process now resembles Simon's. Kind of. I never said he'd be Wonder Man! His engrams are more like a blueprint, a way to process the world. Then why would you do that? At best, it makes you look inept. At worst, it means that you're dicking around with the hopes and emotions of Simon's friends and loved ones. Hank Pym. Douche. Ultron attacks the mansion. All the Avengers take off except for Hawkeye, who feels like he's not wanted. Vision manages to change Hawkeye's mind. Somehow. You are wrong, Hawkeye. They want you. And... They need you. You are an Avenger. Yeah! I am! Aw, oh, I feel bad. Don't feel bad. Hey, you're right! I don't feel bad! The Avengers fight Ultron for a bit, not doing much, but then Ultron lays down a mind-blowing bombshell. Ant-Man created Ultron. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Yeah, this is not a dramatic reveal at all. It's just extra information at this point. There's no emotion here. We don't see Hank's guilt trip over creating Ultron. We don't see any emotion from Ultron as he engages his attack against his father figure. Read some classic Avengers comics, especially the late 90s Ultron Unlimited storyline, to really see how their relationship should be handled. At most, Hank makes Ultron doubt his own sense of perfection long enough to serve as a distraction. Sly dog! You got me monologuing! After that... Vision chooses to side with the Avengers. Again, no surprise there. Ultron takes off, and no one tries to stop him. You've got three members who can fly, and three with long-range weaponry. Just saying, kill a robot, vowing revenge. Nobody? Okay. They return to the mansion to discover that Ultron's robots took off with Simon's comatose body. Wanna know why? Well, I would too. I've watched this whole series. It makes no sense why his body was taken. But no time for tears as our next scene shows Vision and Falcon being made official Avengers. Hawkeye stares at a photo of his lost love, Wonder Man, and Hank explains that Hawkeye was never off the team. And then the credits mercifully roll. Blade was good but mockable. Justice League was terrible but at least laughable. This, this is just awful! This series came out about two years after X-Men the Animated Series was cancelled and it kind of feels like a cheap knockoff of that show. Not just using many of the same voice talents, but the structure is familiar as well. The square-jawed leader, his girl, the gruff loner, his friend who dies slash is captured. The relationship between Ultron and Ant-Man feels like a half-hearted attempt to build on the past friendship of Professor X and Magneto. But being a lazy copycat isn't enough. This series is one of those shows that just seemed like it was blatantly designed to sell toys. The repeated armoring up sequence is just part of it. We also get jungle armor, ultra armor, underwater armor, etc. This is quite a lot for a show that lasted only 13 episodes. And there's the fact that they don't feature the so-called Big Three Avengers as regular characters. While you might have gotten away with it in a better series, their absence is noticeable and is hard to justify, especially with them being in the opening credits. Well, not every episode of this was as bad as the two-part opening, but it's just about impossible to recommend this show to anyone. Only the most hardcore Avengers fans seeking to satisfy their curiosity will find anything but disappointment here. Sloppy writing, mediocre to awful voice acting, and even the animation at times looks like it was done in Flash. If you want a good Avengers cartoon, watch Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's not only superior to United They Stand by leagues, but it's genuinely smartly written. Characters are given death, motivations, and feel true to the spirits of the comics. More than anything, its 90s counterpart ever could muster up. 
Now I want the release of the big budget film more than ever, just to cleanse my palate. Until then, this has been From the Pages, and remember, it's not the size of your team leader, it's what you do with him. Yeah.